Hi everyone. Today I wanted to touch upon the modern web browser control again, but specifically one aspect of it. The whole idea of trusted domains. In my mind, it's simply ridiculous to have a web browser that can't browse. And as such, I came up with a workaround that works for most cases, at least as far as my testing has gone. So that being said, per the usual, I have an article in which I explain what we're going to cover today, and I give the necessary code. So let's dive in quickly. Um, it isn't very complex. There's just a little bit of logic behind it, but it really isn't very complex. So let's start off by looking at the standard uh, approach. So if we take the web browser, the normal one, where I have no code running behind this. So you open a page. So this is the page I'm loading. And once it's loaded, it displays it here. Um, and then you click on any link that is outside of the current domain. So currently I'm on DevHut. But if I click on this link, which takes me outside of DevHut, we'll click on it, you'll see after a delay, a substantial delay in reality, it will open it, but it goes and it opens it now in Edge. Okay, I'm no longer in Access. Okay, here's Access. The page in Access hasn't changed. It went and launched my web browser and then loaded that page that I clicked on in Access. So to me, this user experience is simply unacceptable and horrible. This is not what I want. I'm in Access. I'm browsing a web page. I want to click on a link and I want to go to that link. Um, so how do we make that happen? Now, the first way, and I'm not going to go into depth here, but the first way is called trusted domains. So you'd have to extract the URL, the domain. So uh, if we click on it again, I'm sorry, I closed it. You'd have to take this domain, so access dependency checker.com, and you'd have to add it to a trusted domain table. And then you'd have to change the property on your web browser control so let me just demonstrate that here. You'd have to come here in Design View. And on the control, you'd have to come here to trust the domains and link the table that has that domain in it. So now you've got to predefine. It's not something you can do after the fact or even when the control is live. You can't do it real time. Um, this is something you have to have done ahead of time. So you'd have to have a table that lists every single web domain that you want people to be able to navigate to. And in my mind, that's simply irrealistic. Um, you have no clue when you do a Google search. You have no clue when you go on a website what links are going to be there and where they're going to take you. So this solution of using a table to drive trusted domains to new web browser control is just ludicrous. So I wasn't going to leave it there, and I did come up with a solution. So let's just look at it functionally, and then we'll look at how I've actually made it happen. So if we take my version, um, and you'll see here, it's the exact same page I load, so there's no trickery going on here. And now when we click on it, it opens in the web browser control. And then if we scroll on this page and then we click on another link, Stacked Overflow, that page loads as well. And then if I click on another link here, it will redirect me. Now I'm back on a Microsoft Learn page. Um, and once it finishes loading, you'll see this will get updated, but it's, it's a little slow. Um, so how exactly have I made this work? Because if you look here, I'm, there's no table. There's no trusted domain table. And if you look at the control behind the scenes, you'll see, we go in design view, I'm not using trusted domains at all. Okay. So how have I done this? Well, it's not very complicated. What I discovered is that the VBA navigate uh, overrides, I guess, the trusted domains, which means you can use the VBA to go to any page you want, irregardless of this new security blunder in my mind. So with that in mind, I need to intercept clicking buttons, clicking hyperlinks, and tell the VBA to navigate to that link instead of allowing the default action to occur in the web browser control itself. 
How do we do that? I know this sounds a little far-fetched, but it really isn't. I'm using two events. I'm using the on complete, so when the page has rendered fully in the web browser control. And then I also use the on click event. And that's it. We Two events allows us to make this happen. So let's look at what am I doing when the page has fully rendered? Well, you'll see here, I'm executing JavaScript commands a couple times. So what am I doing? And I broke it down here visually for you. The first one is I'm creating a, a JavaScript script, okay, in which it's going to have this new function, okay? And what it is, is it intercepts clicks on the page. So the default action doesn't occur. So what it's going to do is it's going to find out what you've clicked on. If it's a link, that's why we have here target is a, a, a link. Then it's going to get the href. So the address you're trying to go to the URL. And I'm going to add it to a input that I create. And you'll see it's created right here in the next section. So I'm telling it when someone clicks on it, get whatever they're trying to go to the URL and put it in this input box for me. Why? It allows me then to retrieve where they clicked, where they wanted to go in VBA and navigate to that URL. So then we do an append, so we add this function to the page. Then we move on, and like I said above, I also have to create that input element. I'm telling it to use this input element. It doesn't exist on the page. So this second part here is exactly that. We're going to create a hidden uh, element with an ID of clicked link href, which is the same thing here, so we can bind to it. And then we append the hidden input, and that's it. Lastly, so we have our input, we have our function, then we execute one last thing where we tell it to bind any clicks to our function. So anytime someone clicks on that page, that function fires, it extracts the href URL if one, if it is a link, and puts it into the text box. Uh, should I say input box? And that's it. So that's what happens each time a page loads. So basically it's going to add this feature that allows us to determine what link, what URL has been clicked upon. So the user is requesting to navigate to. The second part is up here. What happens when someone clicks on the web page itself in VBA? Now what I'm doing is I'm coming here. And instead of execute, I'm doing a retrieve value. And I'm telling it, go find that click link href that we created here, right? The click link href, because we push the href the URL value into it. So now I'm saying, go tell me what's in that input box. So now I have a URL to navigate to. And then we juggle a little bit here with the string because hrefs can come in different formats. So depending on what the format is, I sometimes have to add a prefix. I may have to add, you know, all sorts of different things. But at the end of the day, we just do a little string juggling so we get the proper URL. And then we end up at the very end navigating to. I have this one line I've recently added myself because sometimes we'll have a link and if you click on it, it then redirects you and then you could get redirected. And ultimately, I use this function here that will go and retrieve the final URL because we want to navigate to the final URL. If we try to navigate to the initial one and there are redirects, once again, we're hit with that, uh, that the new security feature blunder that they put in place. So by using a function like this that goes and determines what the final URL is, and we navigate to the final URL, we bypass that issue. And that's it. So with two events, and realistically not that much code, um, we end up now with a browser that allows us to properly browse. And that literally is it. And, you know, I clicked on the, the previous one, but we can try try any page you want. It doesn't make a difference. 
and as you can see it works so uh, that's it that's all you need to know to get around this latest security wall whatever you want to call it and return power where it should have been in the first place the web developer um, i requested uh, that the whole trusted domain be a property that as a developer we can enable or disable then it's the best of both worlds if someone wants to lock it down they have the option and if other people have cases like me where sometimes we're doing navigation we don't want to lock down um, have that power as a developer to say you know in my solution yes i need enable no i don't need an enable sadly i was told very quickly that that's not possible so this is why I ended up developing this workaround instead, because I needed a solution. Um, so this is a solution that works well. Um, I've tested it now a couple times in different scenarios, and I have it now currently out in the wild for a client of mine, and it so far has been working seamlessly. So I hope I helped this out, a couple of you guys out there, um, and uh, let me know what you think. The one thing I will just mention, like I say here, I'm doing some string juggling. You could extend this even further because there are other scenarios, certain other cases that can occur, uh, different formats that the href uh, attribute can be uh, set up. But uh, I set it up basically for the most common and the ones I was seeing when I was trying to develop this for my client. Uh, but there could be other case scenarios here where you'd need to extend this if scenario, perhaps do a case statement. I'm not quite sure, but like I say, 90, 95% of the time, this will suffice. There are some edge cases that might still need to be added in here. If you see any, please drop me a comment and uh, I can always add it here myself. Um, thank you very much. If you don't mind, like, subscribe, uh, leave me comments below. It's the only way I can continue to do this, guys. If people don't like, subscribe, and drop comments, I simply won't be able to continue. So uh, wishing you all a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.